Hello open source silicon enthusiasts and welcome to the February update where we look at what happened in February and also got a couple of pointers for things coming up in March. So my big news in February was being able to bring up the MPW1 chips and get some life out of them which was way better than I expected. So I wrote up a blog post about getting the uh, designs up and the process involved in doing that. And then I was very happily surprised by being able to get all of my designs working. So I wrote that up as a separate post. And of course, there's a couple of videos I made about that if you want to see them in action. One of the designs I taped out on MPW1 was Q3K's Capture the Flag competition on reversing FPGA bitstreams. And I thought it would be fun to do that as an ASIC version. So I announced a competition. The first person to reverse the passphrase from the GDS could win a ticket to my course. And George managed to do that and he's put everything up in this repository so you can run it yourself if you want to see how he did it. And there's some interesting stuff that he did there with Yosis and formal tools. I wanted to make my VGA clock a permanent fixture to my desk, so I decided to clean up the wires with a PCB. And it was also an excuse to upgrade KiCad to KiCad 6, and that was really cool to see what's new in that. And you can see everything looks much neater now, and I can adjust all the hours and the minutes and the seconds. Olivier from Texplained has been helping out with some chip scans and actually they're also hiring at the moment so check their website if that sounds interesting. And we've got a public Google Drive here and you can see cross sections and optical scans of the chips and that's really great so thanks very much Olivier for doing those for us. I've been having a play around with uh, putting dyes inside um, little cubes of epoxy and that's been quite fun. If you know somebody that would like to get paid to do that, then please send them my way. I want to make about a hundred of them and just doing a couple is enough hard work for me. Before I mounted the chips in epoxy, I was just looking at them under a microscope and I could never see my designs. But after I mounted them in epoxy and carried them around with me, because I'm so pleased with myself, I was um, looking at them under the sun and I realized that if you get them at just the right angle, you can actually see my designs inside underneath the top metal layers. So you can see that in this photo here. Some exciting news is that I'm now helping out eFabless on the community side in an official basis. So I'll be helping out more on the Slack and I'll also be helping them with the documentation and the shuttles going forwards. So MPW5 is happening. Tape out is on the 21st of March, but you should try to get your designs in as early as possible. We've got 24 applications so far. Um, here's my one in with the course and we've got six people on the course that are planning to tape out on MPW5 and we'll probably take some designs from previous tape outs to fill up the die and see how the tools improve over time. I'd also like to call out especially the Risk Duino from Dinesh and I'll be talking to him later on to interview him about this project. It's probably one of the best documented projects I've seen on the shuttle so far so I really encourage you to check it out. It's like a Risk v version of the Arduino and he's aiming to include all the peripherals that come with the Arduino and make it pin compatible. Some more news from eFabless, which is that they are trying a crowd supply to look at the possibility of crowdfunding projects that depend on ASICs and they're using their own chip Ignite service and making an open source FPGA board. So if that sounds interesting, then join the group Gets. I'm going to be doing a hack chat with Hackaday on the 16th of March. So if you want to get involved and ask any questions or discuss what's going on, then join us there. I'm also going to be a last minute guest on this month's MakerCast, which is happening on Sunday. So go to the YouTube page and set a reminder. Last year, I did a talk for Hackaday Remoticon, looking at a year in perspective of what happened in the open source silicon world. So if you missed the talk and you want to see it, then you can check the YouTube video now. And finally, I just want to mention that the SRAM characterization video interview series that I did with Andrew Zonenberg has been finished and he has just presented his results. So if you're interested in looking at some schmoo plots and some more interesting visualizations of the data he recorded, then you can check the video now. Okay, that's it for this month's roundup and I'll see you for the next one.